The fourth longest river in Africa, the Zambezi, is Mozambique's lifeline. But it is mercurial, flooding its banks, taking lives and devastating the delta. Well, now on BBC World News, how is the country coping with both an age-old problem and a new one, flooding and sea level rise? This week's Earth Report. celebration in the little village of Zimbabwe in central Mozambique. The rains have been good this year, and so far at least, there have been no floods. The villagers live in the delta of one of Africa's great rivers, the Zambezi. It's a vast, remote area with few roads and hundreds of low-lying islands. The river itself is the main highway. Fish are plentiful and the soil is rich. It's a great area for farming, but everyone here knows that the Zambezi can't be trusted, especially in recent years. <laughs> When the waters of the Zambezi are high, it can irrigate the fields and it can produce good food. But if it gets too high, the water can be dangerous and kill people. So water can feed you or it can kill you. Water is good, but it also can be a danger. Over the past decade, Mozambique has suffered from an unprecedented series of massive scale floods. In 2000, the Limpopo Valley was underwater. But since then, the area worst affected has been the Zambezi Delta, where thousands of villagers lost their houses, their animals and their crops in four years of serious flooding. In the time of the floods, everything was underwater, including the house and the fields. The animals died. At the time of the floods, this island was underwater. The water was 20 to 50 centimetres high. It came up to here. You never know when the floods are coming. There's no warning. They come suddenly. But if that happens, I need to just take what I can and leave. And the reason for all this, say the government, is that Mozambique is suffering from climate change, with the sea level rising and floods becoming ever more frequent. Normally the floods occur every 10 years. At least that's what's happened for the past 100 years. From December and January of 2006, 7 and 8, we had floods occurring in the same place in the Zambezi Valley, and that's abnormal. Rising sea level and flooding thanks to climate change has become a global problem and the Mozambique government's solution is an extraordinary program of social engineering. Over the past three years, 55,000 families, around a quarter of a million people, have been persuaded to move from the Delta lowlands to 55 new resettlement villages built on higher ground that's safe from flooding. Zimbabwe village is named after Helena Magazo Zimbabwe, the only female chief in the delta. Hello, I've come to visit your house. Do you understand? She carries out regular inspections to ensure that the new houses are being looked after as she'd like. You need to clean up outside and make it look beautiful. And clean the toilets in the morning. Excuse me, I want to visit this house. 
What's the meaning of this? You have left things all over the place. We're going now, but it would be good if you could get things tidied up. Everything should be in the right place. The Queen, as she's known to her followers, persuaded her people to move from the lowlands to what is now the showpiece resettlement village, built with help from the government and an Islamic charity. Here they have clean water, a school, a clinic and safety. I feel good because here we are not being destroyed by the water. Although that was my homeland, we were never relaxed because we were frightened of the floods and whether we would have to leave. We lived in fear of the water, but now we are here to stay. We have built houses, so we would be crazy to go back. Some villagers work as weavers, but the majority are farmers and they have a problem. The best area for farming is not on the high ground around the new village, but back in the lowlands where they used to live. So every morning, Domingo Waldemar and his wife and child must walk and travel by canoe back to their old farmlands. It's a journey that can take between one and two hours each way, but it's worth it. I come this far to do my farming so I can have something to eat. But the only problem is the water. There were floods here last year before the harvest. The land is very fertile down here. Everything you plant here grows, from bananas and sugarcane to pumpkins. Waldemar is a busy commuter. After returning from the fields, he sets off again on his bicycle. He has a little stall in the local market where he sells onions, garlic, limes and spices and on a good evening he can earn between two and eight dollars. In a country where over half the population live on less than a dollar a day, he's doing well. But for others in the new resettlement village, the government's plan to tackle climate change has brought serious problems. Shanaze Jimo has no husband and no children and she's far too old to walk from the new village back to her old fields. Until now, food has been distributed to the villagers, but that has stopped. So she must survive however she can. She doesn't have a smart new house because she sold the building materials she was given. I used to have a house with a metal roof, a corrugated iron roof, but I sold the roof so I could buy food. Now I have built this mud house. She walks to the chief's house to ask for help. Here, waiting in the shade, are other elderly ladies who have the same problem. I don't have anything here. I can light a fire, but I don't have food to put on it. I could collapse with hunger. For me, it's hell being here. I can't survive. The Queen comes out to ask about their concerns. Good morning, ladies. Why are you looking so sad? Are you hungry? Have you finished the food aid you were given? We need to work by ourselves and not just rely on the government. We don't know when we're going to get aid. The old ladies are told to try to help themselves and cultivate new fields around the new village. But the Queen agrees that without help, they have a serious problem. These old ladies can't manage to go to the fields to work. If they went there with this son, they would die because they have no one to help them. And up here, the farming is impossible, so they will die here from hunger. So what can I do? They all rely on me, but I have children of my own to feed.
Out towards the mouth of the Zambezi Delta, the villages are more remote and the problems are all the greater. Here too, the population has been moved from the lowlands to areas of greater safety and there's a radio network providing a constant warning of any dangers from flooding or cyclones. But here, as in many resettlement villages, there are complaints about delays over decent housing. Under the government scheme, villagers have to build the structures for their new homes and are then promised cement, nails, windows and roofing materials worth $2,000 for each house. In Ila Salia, 32 families have had their new homes completed.